Now, the deadline set by the protesters in Egypt for the country's president to step down has passed, but there has been no word from the man himself. More than one million people gathered in Cairo Central Square on Friday to demand Hosni Mubarak's resignation. RT's Paula Sleer joins us live now with the latest from Cairo. Hello to you, Paula. Now, what's going on in Egypt now? Tell us what uh, have you seen on the streets so far? Well, it really has turned into a waiting game between what some have dubbed the forces of democracy and the presidency of Hosni Mubarak. Thousands of protesters remain out on the streets, the focal point as we enter now the 12th day of demonstrations. The focal point being Tahrir Square in downtown Cairo. But simultaneous demonstrations are taking place in Giza, in Alexandria and in Mahala. The official word from the government is that 11 people have been killed in nearly two weeks of violence. But human rights groups, aid agencies, and foreign journalists put that figure at much closer to 300. Now, the first journalist has been killed. He succumbed to his injuries, a reporter for the Egyptian daily newspaper. We are hearing reports, although they haven't been independently verified, that there has been an assassination attempt on the life of the vice president, Omar Suleiman. We do understand from the reports that two of his bodyguards were killed. Suleiman is widely being touted as the man who will replace Hosni Mubarak, but he did evoke a lot of foreign anti-foreign sentiment when he went on Egyptian state television and blamed foreign elements for inciting the violence of the past few days. Now, earlier this morning at around 10.30 Egyptian time, there was an explosion on a natural gas pipe. This gas pipe provides Israel with 40 percent of its natural gas. Now, Egyptian state television is reporting that the part of the pipe that supplies Israel was targeted by foreign elements. But we are hearing from Israeli radio that that part of the pipe was not attacked. The part of the pipe that was attacked was the part that supplies Jordan. Either way, it is sending alarm bells out into the community, particularly this region, as there are fears that if Israel, that if Egypt cannot control its own internal security situation, this will have geopolitical ramifications for the rest of the region. At the same time, there are concerns being raised in terms of the perceived lawlessness in the Sinai, many Israelis fearing that there will be weapons being being smuggled into Gaza at this moment that will eventually be, be fired on and be used against Israeli citizens. Paul, uh, I'd like to remind our viewers at this point that as we speak, where we're looking at live pictures uh, coming from Egypt at the Tahrir Square there. Well, um, so far we have seen no signs of reaction from President uh, Mubarak to the latest massive protest. What does this mean and where is this political standoff likely to head now? Well, the latest word coming from the Egyptian Prime Minister, Ahmed Shafiq, is that there will be no cancellation of the September elections, that according to the legislation in this country, the president needs to stay in power if any changes to the constitution are to take place. He says that there will be no early exit for Mubarak, and that what we can widely expect is that the Vice President Omar Suleiman will take over, but only after those September elections. Now, today, Saturday, there are rumors and there are discussions that opposition groups will be meeting with, particularly, with particular people in the government. The Muslim Brotherhood, which is the largest opposition group here in Egypt, it's also officially banned, has said that they will not be party to those talks. They are insisting that Mubarak step down first. But indeed, we are noticing a shift both within the opposition group and within the government in terms of wanting to meet each other and wanting to, to resolve this conflict as soon as possible. Because, of course, in nearly two weeks of a standoff, the economy here has drained people's lives have been put on standby and as I'm talking to you from downtown Cairo I can tell you that the shops the homes the people remain barricaded inside their homes and apartments despite the protests protesters that found their way to Tahrir Square All right Paul thanks very much indeed for bringing us the very latest there from Cairo policy are there